Welcome to episode 28 of the 24 Hour Hustle Show, and today we got special guest, Ms. Pennsylvania Rachel Rackaban. <laughs> Welcome to the 24 Hour Hustle Show. I'm your host, Anthony Freeze, and today we got special guest, Ms. Pennsylvania, and that is a big deal um, <laughs> to have you on the show. Um, one of the things I got to say just right off the bat, just to give some people some context, um, you've definitely been highly consistent as far as following up with me on trying to be on the show, and <laughs> I just really admire that consistency and just that work ethic and just trying to, you know, reach out and get things done. Um, so, um, you know, busy schedule and things like that. Finally got a chance to sit down over a cup of coffee, find out, you know, a little bit about your story and, you know, some of your mission and your drive and uh, finally get an opportunity to finally do the show. So definitely an uh, honor to have you on the show. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so happy to be here. Thank I you for having me. Absolutely. So um, like we do on um, every episode, um, for people that may not know who you are, um, how about you give us your background and a little bit of your story just so people can understand who you are and where you come from. Sure. I grew up in Portsmouth, Ohio, and I became an environmentalist primarily because I lived about 20 minutes south of the Piketon Uranium Enrichment Corporation, and most of my friends and family, as I mentioned to you before, were highly contaminated and many passed away from a variety of different types of cancers. And that was very difficult for me to deal with as a child. And I thought about, well, what are some solutions? How can I help change my surroundings? And I was thinking about being an environmental lawyer, and I did a lot of environmental research and uh, got a degree from the University of Cincinnati in politics and environmental science. And I then went on to get a master's degree in um, natural resources and environmental sciences from the University of Illinois. And I have another certification in green business and sustainability. And I'm also a certified energy and technology consultant. Mm -hmm. So I tried my best and have been rather successful, I would like to think, with understanding all of the causes and effects associated with human health conditions. Um, and I've realized that toxins in the environment are really only one of those. There are several others. I used to manage wellness centers. I also was a biology and ecology for professor for the community college of Beaver County. And that was really my life goal. And once I did that, I realized this is not a very lucrative position. Mm. And as a single mother, it was not something that I really could continue to do having multiple positions. And so I streamlined my efforts and decided to go with energy and technology consulting and also start a nonprofit. And my nonprofit is called EcoAction, and we mainly focus on environmental education and advocacy. I do have a television show called EcoAction with Rachel Rackavan, and we also talk about all of the environmental problems in Pittsburgh, the history of, of environmental issues here in this region, and who are the culprits and the stewards that are making a difference. And so I help people to understand how it is that they can make an impact through these different organizations. And I also talk about personal campaigns. So one of those recent campaigns that I just worked on was called the Pennsylvania Model of the Year competition. And I created that competition because I personally was not allowed to compete in many different pageant systems that are out there uh, because I am a single mother. And so I've been excluded. Um, luckily, there are some systems that have actually changed as a result of my outreach. And just two days ago, I found out the, that Miss Earth United States has now opened up a category for single mothers like myself as a result of an email that I had sent. Mm, nice. So I was very happy about that. And I decided to create the Pennsylvania Model of the Year competition because I believe that single mothers are very strong women that should be recognized and have the same opportunities as everyone else. Mm -hmm. And I also included other categories where women are often excluded, like the plus petite uh, runway fashion and also male model of the year categories as well. And that event was really successful. I was very happy with the results of it. Uh, we had so many different winners, Alexis Johnson and Troy Lockett and uh, Shannon Dickey and just um, Kenyatta Neville, Amber Fluid, everybody, they all did such a great job and I'm so proud of them. 
and we decided to donate some of the proceeds, um, majority of the proceeds, to um, rehabilitate water wells in Africa. Mm -hmm. So I said I would either donate $2,000, which will help up to 30,000 people gain access to water, or 20%, so whichever one would be higher. So we're definitely going to be doing that as soon as all the event right monies roll in and we have the total. Uh, but anyhow, so the event was very successful. It was a very beautiful place, and I was very proud to do that. That's awesome. Yeah. So is this like the first of many, or are you planning on doing more? I plan on doing another one uh, next year. We will not take as much time to um, promote because I, I started much earlier than I usually would with doing an event. My last event was in 2015 to help pay for the burial services of my uh, past, my friend that passed away, Donovan Wilburn, he was a fashion stylist. So we donated all the proceeds to his family to help with his burial. Mm -hmm. Awesome, well that's good yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. a, lot of good, good, a lot of good came out of that, um, mm -hmm. out of doing the event and everything. So um, take us back to, you know, what even inspired you to get into pageantry? Um, was there, you know, a specific person that you looked up to or somebody that influenced you? Um, what was it that, uh, what was it about pageantry that made you want to get into it? I think every little girl has something inside of them whenever they're a child and they would think, wow, that would be great. Um, mm. But, um, you know, when I was 18, I was a Miss Ohio Teen USA finalist and I just got the letter in the mail, like, do you want to be a part of this just like everybody else does? And I really wanted to do it and I had the most sponsors at the time and I ended up being a semi-finalist with no training. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and that's amazing because you do need training to do pageantry. Um, but later I decided to do more fashion. So I was a fashion model from the time that I was 18 until now. So I'm still currently working. and. I want, went from everywhere to being a fashion model to then being licensed as a modeling instructor after a few years of work. And then I taught for different agencies, John Casablanca's, John Robert Powers, mm -hmm. as a guest speaker for um, another agency. And Barmazon was the agency that I did guest speaking. But I did that for several years on the weekends while I was in college. And um, I was also a talent scout. I have you know, produced several events. I believe this last one was my sixth event that I've produced. Mm -hmm. And that, it, most of my events were for charities as well. And I decided to get into pageantry more because I know I really enjoyed it. I've actually lost four competitions in the past. And now as an adult, I thought, I think I can really do this now. Yeah. So I went back into it. And then in July of last year, I wanted to start small. so. I enrolled in the uh, in Miss Independence Pennsylvania competition and I won that. And then I was in Miss Pittsburgh Fashion Week and I was the first runner up because my voice quiz quivered a little bit and I needed a little bit more confidence. So then I, the next week I then won uh, Miss Pennsylvania Northern States Reigning America. So I'm a state title holder for both of those as well as the one that I just won on March 3rd, which is American Royal Beauties Miss Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've won three and lost one yeah, since July of last year. So mm -hmm. I've been very successful. My motivation really is that I want to help as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. And I really want to get my message out there. Renewable energy for human health and the environment. That's my primary platform as well as clean water, access to clean water. So at first I started out with renewable energy because that's something that has always been a focus for me related to the contamination that my family experienced as a child. But I then decided to expand it because I think that clean water is really the greatest sign of life. So if you think about it, renewable energy is really just a prevention to human health problems. And whenever you think about, um, you know, the reactions, the reactions are the things that you can do for your health individually. So that would be things like, um, tackling detoxification and um, you know doing the best that you can to help yourself on an individual level because the only other solutions that we really have are to rely on our government and they have unequal implementation of regulations environmental regulations so if we rely on someone other than ourselves then that's putting the power of your health in someone else's hands and I believe that that's not a good solution for any of us um, regulations are often une unequally implemented either by choice or by accident human error and that's not the answer to keeping ourselves health healthy. So renewable energy is the best prevention 
detoxification on an individual level is the best solution as right. a reaction, in my opinion. Um, but water access is very, very important because water is the reason that most people um, have human health problems all across the world. Billions of people have shortages and also most uh, diseases are caused by uh, either the different types of contaminated water and it's really a very important issue mm -hmm. and I hope that I can raise awareness of that and also help people to find organizations like the Georgia Badil Foundation uh, which has rehabilitated 20 wells in the past two years and also built five so it's very important each well helps to um, it helps to educate uh, well what they do is they, they spend a thousand dollars on one well to educate the women on how to maintain it for up to two years. So that's very important. Mm. And if people can continue to donate, and you know, I think that we can really make an impact and it will help, each well will help up to 10 to 15,000 people. Mm. Well, that's awesome. I mean, you have a good mission behind, you know, what you're doing with the pageantry. Um, mm -hmm. So you have a, you definitely have a good platform to be able to spread that mm -hmm. message. So that's definitely good. Mm -hmm. um, for um, you know anybody that may be watching that, um, a young woman or, or, or women at all um, that may be looking to get into pageantry, what, you, what would you say are some of like some of the initial challenges in getting involved with it, and how did you even overcome the uh, overcome some of those challenges? Uh, you know, win all these different awards and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. I believe it's uh, important to have a really good platform and stick with it for life. Mm -hmm. That thing that you care about it the most should not be changed with each competition that you have. It's really about who you are and delivering your purpose. I believe that, you know, I'm a religious person and I believe that I'm a servant of God and that I'm put here on this earth to raise awareness of my concerns and to help people. And I have used pageantry to help me do that. And if you do not know your purpose or what your passion is, figure that out first and then get into pageantry. Mm -hmm because people will listen to you once you have a passion and a purpose. And that's what really, you know, being a pageant queen is all about. It's about being a community service activist and also having scholarship and success and service in a variety of different ways. And if you need help with that, I'm here, you know, I'm actually going to be doing a workshop very soon on how to understand the differences between runway modeling and also pageantry and help women and, and my sister queens or soon to be sister queens understand how it is that they can become successful and become crowned as well. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about that. I'll be training on different things like public speaking. I'll be training on how to develop your platform and send your message out to the community. We'll be talking about how to do pageant modeling versus runway modeling. There are some differences, mm -hmm. um, quite a few differences actually. And we'll be talking about a lot of different things. So the different types of modeling, there are four different types and how to implement those, mirror imaging. So I'll be giving out scholarships to girls that need help. There, there are some financial uh, concerns when it comes to pageantry. So it, most of these organizations out here, they're about $275 or $250 just to compete. And people have to understand that it is an investment in yourself and your future. And you have to be willing to invest that in yourself. So if you need help with getting a dress, you can usually go to a dress store and say, I'm going to compete in this competition and I would really like your assistance. Um, I would be happy to go in with these women and show them how to do that, how to obtain a sponsor. Um, also, there are other things that can help you with getting um, through the pageant experience. You need to have a good makeup artist and also, or learn to do your own makeup. And then there are other things like, um, you know, obviously understanding how to walk under different competitions. So gowns are very slow when you're doing, um, you know, glamour, which is bikini or other types of competitions. You're going to walk a lot faster. You're going to do a lot more turns and show your personality. Gowns are going to be very slow and elegant. And understanding the differences on how you should be walking and delivering yourself to the judges and what they're looking for in that system, understanding that individual system is very important. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for someone like me, I mean, I, I'm going to be honest, I don't know anything about this world, not much uh, when yeah. it comes to pageantry and, you know, the differences between, you know, a runway model or pageantry. So what can you share on that as far as maybe also maybe explaining the differences to somebody that may be trying to understand, you know, all the different, you know, avenues that comes with it? Sure. Well, can I stand up? 
yeah, we could probably get the middle camera to see no. a little bit, but I'm not 100% oh, okay. sure. Yeah. Well, um, Maybe kind of describe it um, as best okay, as you can. Okay, so you want to always feel, uh, imagine that you have like a line that pulls your body up so that you have really good posture. And if you have your hands, you're not going to be reaching down. Um, you're going to have a natural hand position that looks kind of like this. Almost at all times. Mm -hmm. um, when you're doing runway, you're just going to put your hand on your hip. And whenever you're doing ga gowns and competitions and you know things of that nature, you're going to slide your finger up your hip and then put it on your hip like this. Um, some other things that you can do more whenever you're doing bikini and um, um, like the runway competitions and all the other categories that are out there. You can also do a rotating hand like this and mm -hmm. then step into that. So that is something that you do more so in pageantry as opposed to runway modeling. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, well, that's some good so that's just a few things yeah. to add in there. Yeah. yeah. And you said you were self-taught? No, actually... Yeah, so how did you learn? <laughs> <laughs> well, initially, um, I learned from a lot of the different people doing competitions myself, but Amanda Canary, which was Miss Ohio, she taught, taught me a lot of things. Her father was my world history teacher when I was a sophomore in high school. And so she helped me out, and then also I had learned... Um, from some other people throughout time, um, and then also watching videos. And then I decided to get a coach, you know, just last year, and my coach, her name is Samantha Roth. I have two, actually. And she's 17 years old, and she's won 33 competitions. Oh, wow. She's a national title holder um, for American Royal Beauties, which is the system that I'm in now, uh, one of the systems that I'm in now. And that system, again, does allow single mothers to compete, so I'm very supportive of it. Uh, I have another coach that is named Heather Habira, and she's located in Greensburg, and she does everything from you know dance and to public speaking to I mainly just use her services for public speaking because I'm already a licensed modeling instructor, so I mainly just need help with. I always can say that everybody can improve and get a little bit better every day, mm -hmm. so I'm very grateful to have both of my coaches. But um, you know, I, I mainly use them for different things. So know when to use the right coaches for different things that will help you. So say, for instance, Samantha Roth will help me more, more with my paperwork, my intro, my outro. Um, the intros and outros are more about what are some things you're passionate about and, you know, what makes you happy. So I'll talk about, you know, being at my daughter's swim meets and, you know, promoting renewable energy through my television show and helping people and children um, through my platform. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I, I'm One of the things that I'm a huge believer in is being able to have a coach uh, to be able to guide you through the minefield and be able to, you know, show you different things that you may not know. Mm -hmm. um, how has coaching been vital to your success and why has it been important to you? Um, and um, what are some of the things that, you know, some of your coaches have really helped you improve on? Public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was a little bit timid because I had been a fashion model for so long, and I didn't want to make that transition. That's why I created the Pennsylvania Model of the Year competition, mm -hmm. so that people could compete, but they wouldn't have to speak. And there has to be some kind of transition there. So there wasn't any. I didn't see one. I didn't see uh, an, an event that allowed all of these women to compete in all these different categories mm -hmm. that didn't require them to speak, but still allowed them to compete. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to create that for everyone. It was a transitional type competition. Mm -hmm. Some were more experienced than others, but um, you know, I believe that my coaches have helped me a lot with my intros, my outros, and also with public speaking and delivering what my message is, and also being successful in that delivery mm -hmm. to my judges so that they understand how passionate I am about the things that I care about, like genetically modified foods, clean water access, renewable energy, um, companion planting, agroforestry, all of those things. Mm -hmm. And so now I really believe that understanding what your passion and your purpose is, getting that coaching. My coaching is really mainly about, like I said, understanding the differences between runway modeling. If you want to go the runway modeling route, I can help people with selecting composite cards and the right photos mm -hmm. for those and how to bring them into different agencies and casting directors and so forth. I don't really work personally with a, a lot of casting directors and agencies myself because I do so much charity work and a lot of times they want to determine what work that you get and what you do work on specifically. So I can tell people where to go, but I always want to be able to work on 
charity fashion shows and help raise money for different causes. Mm -hmm. That's what I use fashion and, and my exterior, uh, God gave me a gift and this is what I'm using it for, mm -hmm. to help raise money and awareness of different charitable causes or issues throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And I want to help other people do the same. That's awesome. And uh, what are some good tips that, I mean, as far as the speaking goes, that, mm -hmm. you know, that you maybe didn't necessarily know in the beginning that, you know, what was maybe like the best advice that you got that completely altered the way that you speak and how did that improve you, uh, your speaking? Hmm. I always had to speak in public myself, but, uh, you know, as a professor, a biology and ecology professor, it's not really about the delivery. It's more about the content. Mm. And really, whenever you're competing in pageantry, it's more about the delivery and being passionate when, you know, really being a little bit extra, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. enthusiastic. <laughs> and also more enthusiastic. Yes, exactly. Being enthusiastic and being happy and being cheerful about what it is that your purpose is and delivering that to the world. Mm -hmm. So now I know that I always had great content, but it was more about the, the change was really about how to deliver that, how to be excited about what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So, and being on a television show is a little bit different. I know that you're not my judge and I'm not gonna be as enthusiastic. I'm gonna be more focused on the content because mm -hmm. my message is really what's important about me. Absolutely. It's different depending on your source <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and where you are. Right, I I, yeah, I completely agree. I mean, yeah. um, as far as um, the enthusiastic part, I, mean, I read mm -hmm. a good book, um, couple one as far as on on speaking and enthu being enthusiastic is like I think the top one um, whenever you're speaking about something because people can feel and get that emotion from what you're speaking about they can tell if you're passionate about it just by the way you speak about it right and also if you dedicated your entire life to it mm -hmm. so that's what I tell the people that I've been helping lately the girls that just won I'm asking them now what is your platform and what is it that you care about oh well I'm not really sure okay well you have to pick one mm -hmm. and you want that to be the thing you focus on your entire life mm -hmm. and people will also take you a lot more seriously whenever you have a lot of experience in that one area if you change it over and over again you're not going to be as credible mm -hmm. and you always want people to take you seriously but also you know basically uh, trust that you are doing your best to help make that change with in relation to that specific platform so mm. that's what I'm trying to teach them how to do mm. and what would maybe some of the the things about pageantry that may be struggling or uh, overcome or, or something that is an adversity that someone may face um, that is something that's a common problem that a lot of people face and what would you say how people can overcome that like I said, I, I actually just bought 237 gowns a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. And I bought them so that I can help people with getting a dress when they need one. I know that a lot of the girls that I work with, they don't have a dress. So, so I decided to just one. go out and buy hundreds of dresses. <laughs> yeah, sure. okay. So that seems so, to be like the main issue, like uh, people yeah. behave Well, I mean, have. that's one main issue, yeah. So really it's a uh, financial investment in, like I said, in yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I was talking to one queen um, the other day and she said that she was not she was going to the Mrs. Pennsylvania America competition and she was not going to be um, working on having a hairstylist and a makeup artist and I said you have to get a makeup artist you have to get a hairstylist you have to really invest in yourself you can't just do a little bit in the uh, here and then a little bit there your nails have to be done correctly. Mm -hmm. If you can't do that, go and get some press-ons. Nobody knows the difference. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you need a tan, go in. Actually, I, I prefer the um, uh, St. Tropez, the natural tan, because I don't want to have streaks and things like that, but I need to have a little bit of color. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it, it's really a little bit of a financial investment, and then also making sure that you have the right clothes. And I will be renting out some of these gowns at a very, very low cost, and I'll also be giving out um, so that, that I can continue to give them. And also I'll probably even sell some to people um, at a very, very low cost so that I can then replace the gown. And this is just something that I wanted to do on the side because I know that there are so many girls out there that need help. And so I have you know, created this thing. I'm just actually gonna be uh, releasing the location sometime soon, but I'll be helping people with you know, understanding how to compete, how to get into fashion, how to do it in a very inexpensive way providing the gowns that they need and also if they need sponsorships I can even help them a little bit with that too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's awesome. So what are some of the other current things that you have going on with uh, being Miss Pennsylvania mm -hmm. and what are some of the big things that you have coming up in the future? 
So right now, tomorrow, I'll be going as a special guest to the Ecolution Earth Day Fashion Show. I do not produce an Earth Day Fashion Show because I don't want to compete with that event. I want to support it in all of their endeavors, so I'll be a special guest there, and hopefully everybody will be going. Um, also, I will be, you know, basically organizing some litter pickups, some other community service activities, and attending and creating um, some other events with related to uh, helping people get renewable energy because I can help people get renewable energy free of charge and they don't realize that I can help them knock out their gas and electric bills and make their bills renewable without installation. So that includes things like you know windmills and solar panels and things like that. You don't really need all that. And I'll be explaining that in various uh, different forms, but that's something um, that I have been doing with EcoAction for a while now. Also partnering up with other organizations, helping get some horses into downtown Pittsburgh, um, so that children can then have access to, to animals. Mm. There are a lot of other things that I'll be working on, um, but I have been focusing on the Pennsylvania Model of the Year competition to rehabilitate water wells in Africa for some time. So now, um, some other things that I work on, I am also on the National Association of Women Business Owners Board uh, with, that's the Pittsburgh chapter, and that's nabo.org. So if anybody wants to join that, we're a community of women that own businesses, and we support each other's businesses, and I believe that's very important to do. Um, we are all, we also pay people for their services, which I believe is also very important, just as I always do. Um, there are some organizations out there that are not compensating people, and you know I think that's important to always do that whenever you can. I'm not asking for volunteers. If people want to volunteer, that's great. Mm -hmm. But um, you know we always believe that it's important to support each other as much as we can. So uh, we have that buying power. That's what women have, and we're a community that does that. Um, also, I w well, I work with Kelly Robbins, who owns um, Connect One Communications uh, Telephone Engineering Service, and she's the immediate past president. Sunita Pandit, Mrs. Cardiology, she also uh, helps people get natural healing solutions through um, CBD hemp oils. Uh, with a, they are THC free and also have helped me, you know, bounce back from Ill illnesses. So I'm very supportive of that, especially for people that have cancer and also epileptic seizures and so forth and illnesses of other kinds. So um, Mrs. Cardiology, Sunita Pandit, she is the current president. We have an event that's coming up on May 10th, so everybody better be there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's with Dr. Vonda Wright, and that will be held at Gatano's on Banksville Road on May 10th. And I believe our last event was $10, so I would have to look and see exactly how much it's going to cost, but it included food and everything. It was a really great time. So we helped with introducing the mayor and giving him an award for creating equality among women business owners in Pittsburgh. That was exciting. Mm -hmm. I am also on the Pittsburgh Fashion Week Council, and I am helping with the marketing and also sponsorships of that event. And there's a lot going on with that right now, so if you go to the um, pdcdc.org, uh, Pittsburgh downtown uh, uh, corporate, I'm sorry, it's the Cultural um, Community Development Corporation. <laughs> There's mm -hmm. so many, <laughs> PDC, DCBC. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> right. It's the, the Pittsburgh uh, Downtown Community Development Corporation, and they're just changing it to Downtown Community Development Corporation right now. Um, but Pittsburgh Fashion Week has been owned by them for the past few years. Prior to that, it was Miyoshi Anderson, and um, I was blessed enough to walk in that show a few times myself. And now I'm actually on the other side of it, on the production side. Um, we are going to be taking the model applications very soon. We have also been doing the designer vetting, so definitely go on the website. Um, it's the Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Fashion Week, so uh, pdcdc.org, and then you can click on the Pittsburgh Fashion Week and find, find out all the information on that. Awesome. Yeah. So anyhow, well, those are just stuff. some of the things that I'm doing. <laughs> fashion, um, mainly all the things that I focus on are just fashion and science and business ownership, mm -hmm. promoting well, other people's businesses as well as my own and, and charities. That's awesome. Yeah. So where do you see um, yourself in like, let's say the next two years, five years, or what would you say is like the legacy that you're looking to leave behind with doing all the work that you're doing? Wow, that's a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most important question. Right, it is. So I just want my nonprofit to really help people, and I would love to expand even further and also help female models and male models to understand that they don't need to rely on other people for their success. Um, you know, there is a lot of cronyism that takes place, and even if that exists, you can still be very successful. Um, you have to really believe in and invest in yourself 
and the, it's the wisest investment that you can make. <laughs> um, but where do I see myself going? I see myself continuing to uh, do energy consulting because I believe that's a really important thing for me. I, I believe that it's one of the things that I was put here to do. Mm -hmm. And also to continue to work more in the clean water area and also expand my message and help other women and men um, become fashion models and uh, really believe in themselves to be pageant queens and servants to their communities, help them develop their platforms and understand that they can be very successful. And again, regardless of what anyone else tries to do, you can always conquer. Goodness always conquers. Mm, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And then uh, just as we get closer to wrapping up, is there um, so anything that we may not have talked about that mm -hmm. you may want to share or sure. something that may be on your heart or something that you may be passionate about or um, any added value that you want to add on to the guests, I mean, on to the viewers, um, anything at all, um, the platform right now is is yours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this year or whatever. Thank you so much. So, like I said, I would really <coughs> love if you own a business or you know a woman that owns a business, go to NA nawbo.org for a National Association of Women Business Owners. Um, you can email me and I can help you with understanding what that means and what you receive from being a member of our organization. I'm going to give you my email address and also you can email me about my nonprofit. Um, I'm just going to give everybody one email address that's not to confuse. Okay. Um, but you can also email me about how you can become more active as an environmentalist or also teach that stewardship to your children which is important. So you can contact me at R-A-C-H-E-L dot R-A-K-O-V-A-N at gmail.com. So that's R-A-C-H-E-L dot R-A-K-O-V-A-N at gmail.com. And anyone can contact me regarding Pittsburgh Fashion Week, regarding EcoAction. The website is ecoaction.org. It's very easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> E-C-O-A-C-T-I-O-N dot org. And then also my email, rachel.rakavan at gmail.com for any questions or support. They might need. Awesome. Well, that's good stuff. I hope, you know, somebody that may feel inspired or moved or motivated by this episode or something that you shared, uh, definitely reach out to you because that's what we look to do is try to impact lives of people that watch this. So um, if anybody happens to contact you, that will be awesome. We, we've done our job. Thank um, you. So, yeah, I definitely appreciate you I for appreciate coming on to so the much. show. <laughs> um, you know, I definitely wish you the best of success and everything. And uh, we'll definitely be watching along and seeing how everything goes. And, um, yeah, we'll definitely be watching. Yeah. So, um, yeah, now that we know what Rachel does with her 24 hours, we want to know what you do with your 24 hours. Definitely leave a comment down below. Uh, subscribe, turn on notifications, and definitely we will see you on the next episode.